Here's a simple math problem. Let's see if you can solve it. If the ratio of sugar to water is two to five, how much water is needed for eight parts of sugar? All right, so this is the question. Feel free to use a calculator, but if you think you know the answer, put that into the comment section and also put in how you solved this problem. Of course, I'm going to go over everything in just one second, but uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, come on over to my site, tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so we're really talking about practical mathematics, right? So maybe we have a recipe and we need to follow it. But again, the ratio of sugar to water is two to five. So this little colon right there means two. So this is two to five. So how much water is needed if we have eight parts of sugar? So I'm gonna show you a few different ways to uh, think about and solve this problem, but this is really important in terms of practical mathematics. Now, many of you have a lot of experience with working with ratios and solving problems like this because this is a very practical type of math problem. In other words, if you are maybe following a recipe and trying to cook something, you'll definitely work with this word ratio. Or maybe uh, you work in construction and you're trying to mix, uh, let's say for example, epoxy. You gotta be able to have the correct ratios. All right, so a ratio more or less is a fraction. Okay, so we'll just keep it uh, like that for the time being. There is a couple of little technical things that I'll speak to you later on, but effectively a ratio is a fraction. Now, when you hear this word ratio from a mathematical standpoint, you also want to think of this word called a proportion. And we're gonna be using this concept to solve this problem. Okay, so here again, we have this ratio of sugar to water, two things, and the ratio to sugar to water is two to five. So this is just a notation that is used in ratios, and we'll talk a little bit more about what this means. But the question is, how much water is needed for eight parts of sugar? So let's just kind of think about this here for a second, all right? So if the ratio of sugar to water is two to five, and the question is how much water is needed for eight parts of sugar. So our sugar is going to go to eight. So how much water is going to be needed if we increase our parts of sugar from two to eight, right? So of course we have to increase our parts of water to keep up, for the, uh, keep up with the increase of sugar. All right, so we're gonna kind of look at this problem of an, in a uh, few different ways. So I think the best approach is to kind of visualize it and uh, look at it this way. So here is our sugar and here is our water. And you can see here, we have less sugar than water, okay? Because we have two parts of sugar and five parts of water. So this is the ratio of these two ingredients. And we can express it this way, uh, two, two, five. Again, this colon means the word two, or you can write it this way, two, two, five, okay? All right, so these are two, um, ways to express a ratio. Now, let me go back up here and define real quick the difference between a ratio and something else that we use in math called a rate, right? This is really important. So a ratio would be, for example, uh, two to five, right? Now I can express this ratio as two to five, or I can use the word two again, so two to five. Now. A rate would be something like 60 miles per hour. Okay, now I'm gonna write this this way. So 60 miles per one hour. Now when you hear this word per, we're talking about a rate. And when you hear this word two, we're talking about a ratio, but both a ratio and a rate uh, can be expressed as fractions, or technically they are fractions. And the big difference here is that in a rate, the units of measure are completely different. In other words, we're comparing miles, in this particular example, to hours. We're comparing distance to time. 
where as a ratio, we are comparing parts, okay? Uh, let's take a look at another example of a ratio. So maybe like one to 20 student teacher ratio. In other words, there is one teacher to 20 students. So somebody might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, you're comparing uh, teachers to students. Yeah, aren't these different units of measure? No, we're counting human beings, okay? So you gotta be real careful when it comes to um, identifying whether something is a ratio or a rate. But again, from a mathematical standpoint, they are both fractions. Now, when you have ratios and rates, you want to be thinking about proportions. And I'll talk uh, about that in a second. But let's kind of go back here and look at our sugar to water. So this is two parts to five parts. Again, we are counting parts. Okay, so let's uh, take this a step further and look at it this way. So here is kind of our ingredients, right? Our ingredient or our recipe is telling us uh, use two parts of sugar to five parts of water. So something like this. Now let's suppose we increase um, our parts of sugar to four. Well, that means we have to increase our parts of water to 10, right? So we're just gonna double the amount of sugar and double the amount of uh, water. Okay, so now we have four parts of sugar to 10 parts of water. But what would be a good word to use here? Okay, now I'm gonna give you a big hint. It starts with a P and I already used it a few times. Well, what we're talking about is that we need to keep these quantities in proportion. Okay, so in other words, this is kind of our recipe, but if we increase the parts of sugar or water, we have to keep uh, the uh, separate amounts here or the individual amounts uh, in the same proportion. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means that we're constructing two equal fractions. Okay, so two parts to five parts is in proportion to four parts to 10 parts. So we can see this uh, better this way. So when you have a ratio, uh, for example, two to five or two to five, you can express it as a fraction two to five, two parts of sugar to five parts of water. But over here, if we increase our parts of sugar to four, well, we have to increase our parts of uh, water to 10, okay? So we're just, well, we, what we have to do is keep the same proportion. So in other words, two fifths is equivalent to four tenths. If I reduce this fraction four tenths, I get back to two fifths, okay? So in other words, the parts of sugar and water are still in proportion to two fifths. But basically what I want you to know here is that two fifths is equal to the fraction four tenths. So two equal fractions in mathematics is what we call a proportion. And you can use proportions to solve all different sorts of problems. And I'm going to show you how to solve this problem using a proportion as well. Okay, so now that we have a good understanding of what a ratio is, I want to show you two different ways to solve this problem. And the first way, I'm going to kind of classify it as kind of a common sense or logical approach. And the second way we will solve this problem is using basic algebra. All right, so if the ratio of sugar to water is two to five, how much water is needed for eight parts of sugar? So one way to kind of see this uh, visually is to kind of go back to our model. So here is our sugar. We have two parts of sugar for five parts of water. Now, if we increase our sugar to eight, now let's just kind of go back to the problem, right? So the ratio of sugar to water is two to five how much water, we don't know how much water, but uh, we're looking for how much water we need when we increase our parts of sugar to eight. Okay, so when we have eight parts of sugar, how much water do we need? So just kind of keep that in mind as we look at this kind of visual, uh, visual uh, depiction of the problem. All right, so we have this ratio two to five uh, sugar to water. Now we're gonna go from two to eight. Okay, now how do we go from a two to an eight? Well, we can multiply by four, right? So two times four is eight. So from two parts of sugar to eight parts of sugar, we can just simply multiply a four by this two. Well, if we multiply this two by a four, it's probably a good idea to multiply a four uh, by five, which is the parts of water that we need, right? So five times four 
is what? Well, it is 20, which is the correct answer. So if the ratio is 2 to 5 sugar to water, and you have 8 parts of sugar, you need 20 parts of water to keep the same proportion because 2 uh, fifths or 2 to 5 is equal to the fraction 8 over 20, right? So 4 goes into 8, 2, and 4 goes into 25. Okay, so this is a um, this is one approach that you could use to solve this problem. And a lot of you have so much experience working with recipes and mixing things. You probably just uh, did this really fast, and that is fantastic. But these uh, ratio rate type of problems can get far more interesting. And now I'm going to show you an algebraic way to solve this problem. Now, before we continue on, if you want to get better at math, you definitely can. But the key is to find a teacher that gives you clear and understandable instruction. So hopefully you like my teaching style. And if you do, if you're like, yes, I think I can learn from you, well, then you will love my full main math courses. So uh, you can find the links to all of these courses in the description, but they include basic math, pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, pre-calculus, and a ton of specialized test prep math courses. Okay, so again, don't give up if you're having a tough time in math. I can definitely help you out. So you can check out the links to all these courses in the description. So let's get back to the video. So to solve this problem using algebra, we still want to focus in on this word ratio. And anytime you see the word ratio in a math problem, you want to be thinking about a fraction. And you also want to be thinking about a proportion, which is two equal fractions. So we're going to be setting up a proportion to solve this problem. And the first thing that we need to do is express our ratio here, 2 to 5. Instead of using this colon, we want to write this ratio as a fraction. So instead of 2 to 5 this way, we can write this ratio as 2 parts of sugar to 5 parts of water. So now we have a fraction, and that's going to help us set up a proportion to solve this problem. Okay, so again, if you have your ratio expressed like this, two parts of sugar to five parts of water, you want to rewrite it again as a fraction. Now, oftentimes people uh, get uh, their fractions confused in terms of what is the numerator and what is the denominator. So here, two parts of sugar, this is the numerator. In other words, the numerator is the parts of sugar and the denominator is the parts of water. So we always have to keep this in mind, especially when we set up a proportion. But before we get into the actual setup here, let's just do a quick review about proportions. All right, so again, a proportion is two equal fractions, but the main idea here in a proportion is that you can use a property called the cross product. So anytime you have two equal fractions, i.e. a proportion, the cross products are equal. So in other words, when you cross multiply, for example, two times four, that is eight, and that is going to be equal to the cross product going this way, one times eight, which of course is eight. So this is a critical property of proportions, and we can use the cross product to solve proportion problems, all right? So keep that in mind, and now we're going to actually set up this proportion. All right, so here is our ratio. Now remember, a ratio is a fraction. So by definition, a proportion is two equal fractions or two equal ratios or two equal rates. So here is our ratio. We have two parts of sugar to five parts of water. And what we want to do is construct a fraction that is in proportion to this ratio. Okay, But the parts of sugar instead of two are going to be eight. So what we don't know is the parts of water. So essentially what we're looking to do is build a fraction that is equivalent to this fraction right here. So these will be two equal fractions or again, by definition, a proportion. All right, so here is our ratio. We have two parts of sugar to five parts of water, and that's gonna be equal to another fraction that is eight parts of sugar to we don't know what amount of water. So we use a variable like X to represent that amount. Okay, so now we're going to focus in on the simple algebra to find this amount of water. 
All right, so we have uh, 2 over 5 is equal to 8 over x. How do we solve this simple algebraic equation? Well, we're going to use the cross product to solve for x. All right, so in other words, we have a proportion, i.e. two equal fractions. So all we have to do is cross multiply, or we'll use the cross product. So 2 times x is 2x. 5 times 8 is going to be, of course, 40. So now we have 2x is equal to 40. So to solve for x, all we have to do is divide both sides of the equation by 2. So 40 divided by 2 is 20. So there again is our answer. x is equal to 20, or we need 20 parts of water if we have 8 parts of sugar. So again, 8 over 20, we can reduce this down to the fraction 2 fifths. Okay, so how did you do with this problem? Well, if you got the right answer using any technique, that is fantastic. And we definitely got to give you a nice little happy face and an A plus. That is great. But uh, the main kind of idea of this video is to really make sure you understand what a ratio is and what a proportion is. Because although this problem is pretty easy to solve uh, using kind of uh, direct calculations, you can get far more interesting and challenging ratio and rate and proportion problems in mathematics. And it's important that you understand these properties of proportions like the cross product. All right, now if you need additional help in anything mathematics, make sure to check out my full main math courses. You can find links to those in the description of this video. And don't forget to like and subscribe. All right, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.